I got a real treat for you guys today. I'm in Oakland, New Jersey, Ramapo Mountain State Park. We're going to one of the coolest hiking destinations in New Jersey, and my personal favorite. It's called Van Slyke Castle, and it is amazing. Wait till you see this place. to the GoPro for the wider angle so you can see this. All right, guys, so this place is known as Van Slyke Castle. The original name of the estate, however, was Foxcroft. There used to be a website that had pencil sketch drawings of what the mansion used to look like. Unfortunately, I can't find that website anymore, but there are still a couple of web pages where you can find out some information about the history of this place. On one of those websites, it said that in addition to all of the rooms, garages, the layout of the main house, that there used to also be a chauffeur's cottage. And I believe the chauffeur's cottage is over here. need a haircut. So, of course, the best time of year to come here is in the winter when all this foliage is gone. But a couple of weeks ago, I tried to do this hike to make this video, and the whole park was closed down because they were filming like a movie or something. There was a film crew here. And so now that I'm here, what I've discovered is you can see all this brush has been cleared away. So my guess is they were filming right here. I don't know what movie it was, but I'll be on the lookout for it. Um, so plus side for the video is you get this great view of what I believe was the main entrance of the house. Not 100% sure on that. I'm just guessing based on the grandeur of this uh, staircase. Without any uh, drawings or pictures of what this place actually looked like, I can't say for certain that this was the main entrance, but what I'm guessing is because of the, the gateway there and its proximity to these stairs, you know, it's not hard to imagine a carriage horse-drawn carriage coming through here and pulling up to the stairs. Who knows, really?
So it was my friend Julie who first brought me here uh, maybe 15, maybe closer to 20 years ago. And uh, I come here quite often, uh, have been coming here quite often ever since. This is definitely one of my favorite places to hike and explore. I also did a photo shoot here a few years ago with my friend Heidi. And here's some of those pictures. So right now I'm coming in from, I'm, I'm facing south. This is Foxcroft Drive, which if you look on Google Maps is a big long driveway. Uh, there is one residence that's uh, currently occupied, uh, but you can follow Foxcroft Drive on Google Maps and you can see where it enters the, the mansion area. And so I'm coming from the north heading south into what I think would be some kind of parking area. So if you see this big wide opening here, and this where I'm walking was part of the driveway. So you can imagine a carriage or an early automobile pulling into this section here. Obviously there was a second floor or a floor above this, but this whole area here was all open. And then just to the left, there's this doorway where you would enter the first floor of the estate. The fireplace right there, and then above it on the second floor, another fireplace, and this whole thing is a big chimney. Here in what was the basement, you can see the old boiler from uh, whenever plumbing was introduced to the house. Okay, so what's the story with this place? Well, from what I found, the story starts with a woman named Ruth Coles, and she was a nurse in New York City back in the early 1900s. And around 1905, she was caring for a guy named Charles Hallowell. Now, it says that Charles was a captain of industry. Uh, it doesn't say what that industry was, but in 1906, Ruth and Charles got married. But a year after they married, Charles mysteriously died. And he left Ruth with $1.5 million in 1907. It's a lot of money for 1907. You know, look, I'm sure they were a happy couple. I'm sure they were in love. But my cynical mind can't help but imagine that, you know, if you're a single woman in New York City in the early 1900s and you're working, chances are Ruth was pretty poor. And if she was a nurse caring for a guy who mysteriously died a year after they were married and she inherits a million and a half dollars in 1907, I can't help but feel a little suspicious about that scenario. But whatever. Two years after Hallowell died, she married a guy named William Porter, and he was a stockbroker also in New York City. And it was William Porter who built this place. Two years after Ruth and uh, William Porter were married, he died in a car accident. And so Ruth inher inherited this estate. A couple of years after that, Ruth married a lawyer uh, named Warren Van Slyke. And that's obviously where the name of this place comes from, Van Slyke Castle. Now they were married for 12 or 13 years and they lived in Jamaica, Queens, but uh, Warren eventually died in 1925 and at that time Ruth came to live here at Foxcroft year-round permanently and uh, she lived here until 1940 when she died at the age of 63. Uh, the estate was left to her family, I'm assuming her kids, and it changed hands uh, a couple of times between 1940 when she died and uh, 1959. In 1959, this place had been abandoned for some time. Vandals broke in, burned it down, and it's pretty much been like this since 1959. 
So in addition to the main house here, there's also a swimming pool and a water tower. So let's go check those out. All right, guys, so just a few feet north of the house on the white trail, you're going to come to the swimming pool. Check this out. You can see the stairs going down into the shallow end. And then also over here, there are these two iron pegs that I'm guessing would have been some kind of mount, maybe for a springboard or a diving platform. Pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to keep heading north on the white trail, and eventually we're going to come to the water tower. Kind of like all the towers that you see on the skyscrapers in New York City, there would have been a small water pump somewhere on the property, pumping water up to the tower from the reservoir. The water would be held in cisterns inside the tower and then gravity fed back down to the house. Here's some of the exposed pipe leading up to the tower. And up to the tower itself. Okay, you know what's creepy? I think I'm alone. I don't think there's anyone else around here, but I keep smelling someone's perfume. And it's kind of freaking me out. Anyway, as you continue heading southwest on the white trail, eventually you'll come to an opening with a spectacular view. Check this out. Looks like we're just a few days away from peak color changing season. And also, I can't really see because the sun's in my eyes, but also down there in the distance, that's 287. I don't know if you can see that. So anyway, that's going to be it for me today. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until I see you guys next time, Go take a hike.